Welcome to this demonstration of Baby Slicer 6.0. The program is now open. I'm just going to drag and drop a file on it. This came from a GE scanner. It's a Kretz file in spherical. You can see in red the outline of the original data. It is indeed a spherical data set. And in green, it's the outline of the resliced data set because I'm working with square voxels. OK. So first thing we're going to do is, well, we're going to remove those red lines because they're a little bit bothersome. Here they are. They're gone. We're going to filter the image a little bit. And we'll have a better view of our baby. Yes, that's, uh, that's not too bad because, of course, ultrasound is very noisy. And we can also change the threshold. By default, the default value is 45, but we can increase and decrease this value until we are satisfied this is this is quite nice actually yeah yeah not bad not bad at all okay and maybe a little bit more no it's about 65 yep okay now uh there's a lot of unconnected surfaces if you look at here in front there's a lot of surface that are not connected with one another I have a tool that enable me to remove those and just keep a few of the surfaces. For example, if I just click on the surface of the baby and I say delete, it's going to delete all the other unconnected un surfaces. So that's the first step. But I also want to edit my baby to remove everything that I that's outside here. So I'm going to go in edit. And uh, this is a 3D edition tool where the brush is a sphere that can be used to either mask the voxels to have them disappear or bring voxel inside the, uh, the volume or I can edit the value, the gray level value of the voxels to decrease it or increase it. My brush is a sphere. Let's have a look here in 2D. If we see we have the eye, the brush is a sphere that is projected from the eye until it touches the surface of the object, the polygons. We have two parameters controlling the brush, the radius of the brush and the pressure. If we increase the pressure, then the brush penetrates inside the, uh, the geometry up to the point where when pressure is 1, it, it uh, penetrates by the radius of the brush itself. Okay. So if we see here the brush is a sphere, I can change the radius of the brush with the mouse wheel, and I can also change the pressure applied to the brush until, and in blue you can see the polygon that would be affected by my brush. If I decrease the pressure, I'm just touching the surface. If I increase, then the sphere is almost half inside the, uh, the geometry. And when I'm going to apply a either remove or gray plus or gray minus on the image with the left mouse click, it's going to actually apply these masks or these values to the complete volume of the brush, to the complete sphere of the brush. So first I'm going to use the remove mask with a big pressure. And this is going to use this just to mask out all the voxels that I don't want. I can remove them quite fast. Now, if your graphic card is not very, very fast, then these operations will be, uh, you won't have real time. So what we can do, we can, instead of working with the complete data set, we can work with a subset of the data set. And this is through the region of interest mode. Here, region of interest, when it will you, first of all, you could, if you want, you can clip part of the data set to work only on a specific part. But also you have the buttons at the bottom here. Normal, fast, faster, fastest. These use some sampling. So for example, in normal, I have 24 million voxels that I'm working with. If I use fast, I decrease the number of voxel up to fastest where I only have 3000 polygons. So now if I go back and edit, it's a, the inter, interaction is a lot faster. These are very handy. And it's also mapped to the F5, 
F6, F7, F8 keys because you want to be able to go from one to the other. You can edit with the fastest mode and then look at the results with all the polygons. Okay, now let's... Uh, so I'm using a mask, remove mask, to remove my uh, voxels, but when I get near the... Uh, you can see that there's a lot of staircase in this because this is a mask, it's really voxels are in or out, there's no in between. So when I'm getting near the surface of my baby, I will want to change instead to gray minus, where instead of masking the voxel, I'm decreasing the value of the voxel itself until it falls underneath the threshold. And this will give me a smoother, smoother values. And it's what I'm gonna use here to finish removing my unwanted voxels. Okay, I'm gonna remove them here. You can see in the, I'm gonna increase the size here. You can see in blue the voxel that will be affected and the brush touches, this is in front of the baby, so the brush should stop on it. If I remove them, eventually once they're gone, then the brush will continue until it hits the baby itself. That's what happened here. So I'm stopping here. Okay, I can remove this. I can probably do a little bit of cleanup inside the head of the baby also. Mm -hmm. Oop, that's too much. So now I, rem I've di I did an operation that I don't want to. So I have access to an undo by brush stroke. I can undo all my different brush strokes. It's Control Z, Control Y to redo. Okay, or let's redo this one here. What I can do also is with the right mouse button, I can bring back the value of the voxel before I started editing. So you have access to two different means of undoing what you're doing. Either you can use the right mouse button or you can do the undo keys. Okay, so I've got my surface. Now, Let's see, how will I mount or present these? Um, I'm gonna decrease the size here a little bit. I probably want to put it on a frame, so I will want a back plane to hold the baby together. So the next step will be to rotate it until it's... Yep, yep. Okay, I can rotate it like this here. Probably a little bit more like this. Uh, a little bit more like this here. How's that? Okay, that's not too bad. Yep, that's about what I want. Okay, with edit, again, let's go. Uh, so once uh, your rotation is uh, complete, you just apply the transformation and it's gonna bring back uh, some noise due to the fact that it's interpolating the values of the voxel, but these I can remove with my cleanup tool. I select my surface, remove all the noise. Okay. I can probably do a better job with the harm here if I use gray plus. But I'm not very good at this. Uh, you need to be uh, to have some artistic fiber to be able to uh, to really edit your surface. And I have none of these. But eventually, if you do have some fire on the abilities, you can probably uh, go in and remove any. Uh, any problems on the surfaces. Uh, I would probably here, the, uh, the hand doesn't look very nice. I want to increase the value of the threshold here. And I could do that locally by just increasing the value of the voxels. So I can come in here, take a big brush and increase the value of the voxel, which is not too bad. And then I just have to remove 
these here. Okay. So next step now, I said I want a backplane behind the baby. If I just book a backplane, the, the inside of the head will be empty. There's, there may be some problems here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to project the contour of the face of the baby toward the back, and then I'm going to put a backplane. So first thing I'm going to do for this, I'm going to use my clip planes to make sure that, let's see, this is the back. This is the front, okay. I'm gonna look at it from the front. Okay, so this is the front grid plane. I'm gonna put another clip plane behind here. Okay, and I'm going to project these toward the back. So this is the projection mode. And here I'm going to take my brush and project my voxels. This is what it gives. Okay, if I go back in region of interest and remove my clip plane I can see that my baby is here with my projection okay next step I'm gonna put my back plane in so for this again I'm gonna use clip planes and I say okay if I want to keep the ear back plane will be here like this so I'm gonna go in edit and I'm, I'm gonna fill my back plane oh but I'm gonna sorry just gonna clip a little bit because it's too big I just want to stay inside the uh, I just want a baby I don't want to keep playing that's too big for nothing so now I'll go back to edit I'm gonna fill take a big brush and I'm just filling all the voxel inside the clip region Okay, dokie. Now, if I go back in region of interest again, remove all my clip planes, I can see my volume, my baby. Okay, well, it's maybe not the best volume ever created, but it's not that bad. I, do I probably want to uh, remove? Yeah, I'll, I'll clip the bottom here. So I'm just going to remove these, this part here and that's done easily with the edit, remove, I can use this to mask out all my polygons that I don't want, okay, let's go back again to region of interest, okay, that's more like it. Okay. Now, if we use the clip planes to look inside, we notice that there are holes inside our surface. So I'm going to go in a tool here, hole filling, and say fill out those holes. There we are. And now there's no more holes inside the, uh, the geometry, but if I print it, it's going to use a lot of material. Uh, so if I, you want to, you can use an optimize mode here to remove the interior and you can even put in a frame inside it so that it's not too fragile. And that's it. Now I'm going to really remove all my clip planes. That's my volume. I go in file, save geometry or file, save geometry. I select a STL binary and do a save. And there it is. I've saved my geometry. Thank you.